you know, there's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. Number 24 is Content Farms in Macedonia. Vidite kako se napravi greška. Tak ki vide kobna. Nema vraćanja nazad. So, Europe need to to remain more sexy pin sexy pull lady in the world. Ajde majkata. Gospodje čuva Macedonija i nizinite gregi. Macedonia holds local elections for the second time under the Zayev Ahmeti regime. And guess what? Vumro Dopamane has won big in the first round, which was held on Sunday, October 17. While Zayev predicted his party, Sidasim, the League of Communists of Macedonia before 1991, would win 22 mayorships outright, and that Vumro Dopamane would win six, it was actually Vumro Dopamane that won 22 outright, and Zayev and his comrades taking nine. Ali Ahmeti's party, Dewey, the former terrorist in L.A., won three. Oddly, Ahmeti thanked his voters and said, quote, I will never disappoint you, close quote. It is almost as if he is preparing his constituents for something. For his part, Zoran Zayev reacted with absolute defiance, telling Macedonians in a Facebook post, quote, Citizens sent a message, and we must listen to that message, understand and act on it. The people want to see better results, but the evil threatens from the opposite. We are the fight against evil. All of us, each of us, close quote. Well, when your own government calls the opposition party and those who vote for it evil, you know they are losing touch with reality and rapidly slipping into madness and into relevance. Needless to say, his childish reaction caused a great deal of ridicule and anger and, in all likelihood, motivation for the second round. Well, what's next? Well, first of all, Macedonians need to finish these elections, and that second round will be hail- held on Sunday, October 31, All Hallows' Eve, which is celebrated in many countries around the world. It may yet again be a scary and frightening z- night for Zayev and his comrades. And once those votes are counted, Macedonia can, hopefully, begin rebuilding and reclaiming what is rightly Macedonian. We'll discuss all of this and nothing else on this episode of the Macedonian Content Farmers Podcast. I'm Jason Miko, coming to you from the foot of the Catalina Mountains in Oro Valley, Arizona. And this is Svetan Shlemana from the heart of evil in Skopje, Macedonia. <laughs> no, really, I, I, I'm of calling evil. in from an urban part of the city which voted uh, 2 to 1 for Vimera, so this is probably the evilest part of the, of the city, if you, if you believe what I'm saying. You know, the, the, I, re, I recall, Svetin, that the uh, first Star Wars, it came out in, what was it, 76 or 77, was mm-hmm. eventually renamed as Episode 4 and given a title, A New Hope. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and maybe maybe that's the title of, uh, of this uh, episode, 124 of the Macedonian Content Farmers podcast, A New Hope, question mark. We're recording this on, what is today, Tuesday, October 19th, so this will drop on Wednesday, October 20th. Obviously, we'll do another podcast uh, after those that second round on Sunday, October 31. Uh, but for now, for our listeners, why don't we uh, kind of parse this out, suss this out, break it down, and, and, and uh, talk about what just happened. You mentioned that you are uh, calling in from the heart of evil, uh, where voters went two for one for Vumro. Uh, as I mentioned in the opening uh, monologue, Vomero got 22 mayorships outright. Now we're talking about, again, for for listeners that may not know, there's it's it's uh, 80 mm-hmm. districts plus Skopje, yep. so 81 uh, plus city council members, and there's yeah. I don't know how many thousands of city council members there are. About uh, uh, 20 to 40 in each municipality. Okay, so you can do the math, says our British friends say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so 22 plus Nine plus uh, three is, uh, what, 34? So yeah. 34 out of 81, a little under half that are yeah. outright. So all the others will go to a second round, as our uh, listeners may or may not know, in the voting for, at least at the local level, the mayorships and uh, city council, it's the top two vote-getters. If not, neither makes 50% plus one, mm-hmm. goes to a second round. Yeah, yeah so, but, th- but these were the big ones. The big yes. ones okay, went, yeah. went fast, and that's the that's the uh, that's the wipeout. That's the that's where Zayev got steamrolled. So uh, there are you know if we have like a, a cluster of few villages, could be 
uh, counted a municipality if they have like historic rights or geographically unique uh, disposition. Then there would be like a municipality of a small city and uh, 10 villages around it. And then there would be like a proper city like Prilep, Bitola, Shtip, Veles, uh, Ohrid. And uh, these are also, you know, a, mu a municipality. So these all count in the 80. Uh, and then Skopje is the largest city. It, it has like uh, the mayor of Skopje, the council of Skopje, but also has like 10 other additional municipalities, some rural, most of them uh, working class uh, or administrative urban centers. And Vmero creamed Zaev, especially in these in Skopje. And actually, you know, uh, going into this, um, the last local election was 2017, just after Zaev grabbed power, so like uh, not even half a year after the April 27th incident in the parliament. So <clears throat> Vmero was at its lowest point, and apparently there was a lot of intimidation and even outright fraud, because uh, Vmero went from holding all the municipalities in the country, except for uh, Kumanovo, downtown Skopje, the center municipality, Zav, Strumica, you know, a few places. Vmero went from all, holding all the local councils and mayors, mayors in the country to having just Kavadarci as a proper city under its control and uh, a few rural municipalities around Skopje and across the country. Zav won everything. It was a complete disaster for Vimera. On the wings of the colored revolution, of the power grab, of the, you know, Zav was using the police, the prosecutors, the international support, everything rolled into one. Uh, Vimera lost in, you know, places like Prilab, Veles, which they would usually win by a wide margin before, so it was a complete disaster. Uh, and now it's the same thing, but in, in the opposite direction. So Vimera did not win any additional votes. In fact, they lost some votes to the 2017 elections. But this is largely because since 2020, since Corona struck, since last year's mm -hmm. general elections, turnout is lower. So turnout is about 50% and it was 60%, even over 60 in 2016, 2017 elections. So Vimera lost some votes since these uh, local elections, which it lost exceptionally badly in 2017, but but Zayev lost about half of his votes. So Zayev mm. was destroyed. SDS were destroyed everywhere. So even with the reduced uh, voters, voter turnout for Vimera from uh, 2017, even with the rise of Levitsa, which is taking votes from both Vimera and SDSM, other protest parties, etc. Zayev lost so many votes that uh, not even the Albanians voting for him could could save him uh, in the mayoral races. So it was so he lost uh, outright. He lost uh, uh, Prilep, which was the big win, the first win mm -hmm. to fall of the evening, uh, and then everybody expected that he will win in Stip. He had a competent doctor, incumbent mayor. Defeated in Stip, defeated in Veles, and then the Skopje municipality started arriving the results. Destroyed in Aerodrome, destroyed in Kisala Voda, which is a working class district opposite Aerodrome, destroyed in Gazibaba, which is, you know, old uh, Macedonians expelled from Aegean Macedonia, from Greece, so always mm -hmm. a patriotic heartland. But Zaev held all these districts since 2017. Uh, lost in uh, Butel, where he was hoping that Albanians will help him, they're, they're a minority in this part of Skopje, uh, lost in Djurca Petrov, and then we saw the results, he actually uh, narrowly won in Cintar, which is all the old communist bourgeoisie, so Vemmer always had a difficult time there, right. and even lost, uh, you know, he won in, in Karpos, which is the most uh, uh, communist, most left-wing, uh, administrative part of the city, but uh, uh, there is a spoiler candidate, this former famous mayor of uh, Karpos, Stevce, Kimov Stevce, yeah. yeah, who split from Zaev, sided with Vemera. So Stevce and Vemera together have uh, more, well above uh, what 
the Zayev candidate. Yes, so he's he's very likely going to lose even Karpash. So so he's going to be destroyed in in Skopje. Uh, he lost the mayoral race in Skopje, where the incumbent Zayev's mayor Petra Shilegov is running against uh, a young, prosperous, you know, successful uh, man manager, uh, female woman manager. Uh, mm -hmm. who is endorsed by Vemero. She's not the Vemero candidate, but is endorsed by Vemero. So she's winning uh, by seven, 8,000 votes, even with all the Albanian votes favoring Zav. So Skopje is a disaster. Then we get results that he lost in Bitola, <laughs> which, you know, I think <laughs> voted for Zav 2-1 two to one in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, by 100 votes, the Vemero guy didn't win in Ohrid in the first round. So, you know, as the numbers kept coming, it was a total disaster for Zayev. He he foolishly gave away Kumanova, which is uh, which SDSM have held forever. It's a to total like uh, a city. They they would never vote for Vemera. Uh, they're close to the border with Serbia. Serbia is a strong influence there, but Zayev uh, practically uh, had a huge fight with the mayor of Kumanova who eventually said, okay, I'm strong enough, I'll run an I'll have an independent run. And he beat the Zayev candidate by uh, 20 votes, but Vemero is a strong third place party, so now Vemero will endorse this uh, spoiler candidate just to spite Zayev. Mm. By Lar definitely all of the Vemero people will vote for him, so he's a certain winner in the second round. So, practically, in the... Uh, in the first round, Vemera got uh, Prilep, Stip, Veles, smaller cities like Sveti Nikola, Vinica, etc. Got most of Skopje, so Aerodrom, Kiselavoda, Butel, Gazibava, Djurcha. And this is finished. There is no do-over here. And of, mm -hmm. of the major cities, Zayev only got Strumica, which is, of course, he is he's the lord of Strumica. No? He can't, you can't touch him. So Vemera go in the second round with an advantage because they won in Bitola, in Ohrid, and in Skopje, the very important race in the capital. Uh, and they have a very good chance to spoil Zayev in the second round in Kumanova, in Karpos, voting for former SDSM candidates who now strongly dislike Zayev. And there is <coughs> even a chance Vemera wins in Cinta, in downtown Skopje. Mm. Mm. So it's a complete disaster. Zayev only won in Strumica and lost everything else and I, I, there is that, there are many small cities rural municipalities so that's how Zayev has nine wins in the first round Vemera mm -hmm. won uh, a bunch of rural municipalities as well this is you know neither here nor there or it's not even very important right well <clears throat> that's that's a good rundown and I want to switch briefly and talk a little bit about some of the big Albanian ethnic Albanian mm -hmm. uh, majority uh, towns like uh, Tetavo but first since you are in the heart of evil, Erdrom, <laughs> uh, I think it's worth pointing out. I'm looking at some numbers here from the uh, State Election Commission. In 2017, uh, Citizen got 22,000, just under mm -hmm. 22,600. This year, less than 9,000. Yep. That's huge. Now, just... Vomero stayed roughly the same, 18,700 versus 18,800, so increased it by 100. But that really speaks that. Butel, again, 10,000. In 17, 6,800 now. Mm -hmm. Ghazi Baba, as you mentioned, 17,600, 8,800. Yeah. That's half. More than half. That's half, yeah. Uh, um, Georgi Petrov, 13,155, now 6,600. Yeah. That's More half, than half. You know. Yeah, so, I, and so the, the, the question is, and Vumero in all these districts that I just mentioned basically stayed the same or increased modestly, modestly. Yeah. So, those those citizen voters either didn't vote, <clears throat> they stayed home, um, or the third parties took the yeah. votes away. Or didn't so. even exist in the first place because, as I said, we're now having serious questions about the 2017 election, how uh, legit it was. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because one of our friends, a, a retired diplomat from an EU country, posted on, uh, on, twi on the Twitter sphere this morning, uh, saying, you know, on social media, increased number of questions pertaining to possible manipulation of 2017 local mm -hmm. elections. Next to effects of introduction of fingerprint uh, on uh, these elections, plus questions on whether this prevented mal massive ballot stuffing, uh, group voting, etc., that occurred in 2017. Yeah. So, yes, that is, um, 
something that has got to be looked at very closely and, um, you know, to the, to the detriment of the ruling regime. Uh, that might be something that they deeply, deeply regret is having yeah. to introduce the, the fingerprints. Yeah, yeah. I always thought but, that those elections were stolen. My only question mm -hmm. was why didn't they rig the referendum the next year, the 2018 name change referendum? Maybe it's easier, you know, because <laughs> perhaps people voted in 2017 uh, in a more balanced, you know, not giving mm -hmm. SDSM the full victory. Maybe it was like half and half. And then maybe it's easier to switch... Uh, the results once somebody has voted. There was a lot of talk mm -hmm. about bribing the electoral committees, which, you know, they, uh, Vimura has observers, uh, but uh, these are bribable, especially mm -hmm. as the party was, you know, losing steam and uh, with the Mialkov practically switching sides, etc. Uh, and uh, then in 2018, pro apparently cleaner, a safer option is to just boycott the election. So it's probably... It's, uh, it, very likely that it's impossible to, or more difficult to stuff ballots, especially in the Macedonia and the more urban parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably easier to switch the vote if you have full control of, uh, you know, uh, government and police and uh, etc. So if you if you vote, people who voted in 2017, it's now you know a widely spread theory that some of these votes were switched from Vimera mm -hmm. to SDSM. Otherwise, you know, it's very difficult to explain um, what happened here. Well, that, but also, if I can can, can offer a, a, another uh, a thought or theory, the, the reason that the ruling regime didn't try to rig those elections was because simply of hubris. They mm -hmm. were so, they, they felt flush after the, the 2017 elections. Uh, they believed their own lies live not by lies, Solzhenitsyn. They believe their own lies. Uh, <clears throat> they believe the lies the internationals were telling them, etc. cetera. And, uh, and then, of course, as we all remember from the, the night after the referendum, they were shocked. They didn't know what to do for two days. Mm. Um, and then, of course, they went ahead and did what they wanted to do anyway. So uh, anyway, let's, let's move on and touch briefly on um, some of the larger uh, the ethnic uh, Albanian towns, starting with, of course, Tetovo. I'm looking at the uh, the SEC website here right now, and it looks like uh, Teuta Arifi got 29%. Uh, Kasimi uh, got 27%. Mm -hmm. So just if, it's, if I do the maths here, it's 600 votes roughly uh, yep. separating them. And then you have four other candidates that split the rest of the vote. Of course, Tetovo was the scene of that horrific fire that mm -hmm. uh, tragically took the lives of, of 14 citizens on September 8th, Macedonia's mm -hmm. 30th Independence Day, Teut Arifi, the ruling uh, Dewey party, Ali Ahmeti, aligned with Zoran Zaev and Sidisim. Nobody ever accepted any blame. Nobody resigned. Uh, Zoran Zaev dismissed that event as, uh, you know, eh, things happen. Let's yeah. move on. He literally so, said, like, crap happens. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very close race. Obviously, uh, those two, uh, Arifi and Kasimi, uh, go into the runoff. Um, what else can you tell us about that particular race? So uh, this time, for the first time, both Vimera and SDSM now have Albanian partners. Zaev had uh, Dewey as a partner in 2017. It helped him in the mayoral races. So usually uh, the Macedonian and Albanian parties support each other for the mayor and then run separately for the council. Um, and uh, this time, uh, so the Macedonian parties would support their Albanian partner in an Albanian majority city, and conversely, ask for the Albanian support where there is a Macedonian majority uh, city, mainly in the city of Skopje. Mm -hmm. uh, so Vimra helped uh, the Albanian opposition, Arben Taravari, win in uh, Gustivar. So that's the second largest Albanian city, that's a big win. For the Albanian opposition, they also won in Debar. Uh, Dewey won in uh, Sara Yaracinov around Skopje, uh, in uh, Lipkova, stuff like that. Uh, there is going to be a big fight for Struga between Dewey and the Albanian mm. opposition. Again, SDSM will be helping uh, Dewey, Vemera will be helping uh, the Albanian opposition, Ziedin Sela the Alliance of Albanians and alternative parties in Struga. 
Um, there is going to be a big fight in uh, Chile and Skopje, where between again between Dewey and the Albanian opposition, the Sela led Albanian opposition, they are pretty even. A lot of Macedonian Vimara voters in Chile, so so practically Vimara is saying, okay, we help you in the second round in Chile with our voters, and you, the Albanian opposition, help us in the race for the capital Skopje for our candidate Daniel Arsovsk. Petr Shiligov in Skopje is completely dependent on the Albanian votes, so he lost, uh, he, he even lost uh, in uh, Karposh and Sintar, I think. He's only, uh, he's only clinging to several thousand votes difference, like seven, eight thousand votes behind Daniel Arsovska because of the Albanian districts, Aracinova, Sara, Chair, where Dewey helped him. So, um, He's now going out uh, promising that he's going to appoint one, now uh, even probably two deputy mayors who are going to be Albanians if he's elected. So Zayev has to promise everything to, the, to Dewey for the support in Skopje. But Titovo is messing up everything. <laughs> so in Titovo, mm -hmm. there is a race between uh, Dewey, Teuta Arifi, now completely discredited after the fire, after so many years of corruption, the city is a complete mess, you know, you even feel, you know, queasy just driving through it, when I, which I have to do sometimes, uh, you know, garbage, uh, buildings built everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a complete mess. Uh, and uh, his, her opponent is Bilal Kasami from the Besa party. So, so he's not, so the Albanian opposition supported by Vimer did not make it into the second round. And that actually turned out to a huge benefit for the opposition, because now Kasami is in the second round. This is the pro-Erdoganist, uh, kind of like mm -hmm. Turkish-leaning, uh, religious, uh, Islamist uh, Albanian party, which is part of the coalition. And it has three seats in the, gov in the parliament, so it can even bring down the government. And before the elections, mm -hmm. Kasami said, listen, Zaev, we are all in the coalition, you, Dewey, and me. Uh, you need to be neutral, you need to allow me to compete against you, Tarifi, fairly. If not, I'm leaving the coalition, I'm bringing down your government. And uh, Zaev apparently did not support either. He only has like a few thousand votes. Uh, ethnic Macedonians, SDSM supporters in Tetovo, he could control. So uh, he did not use the... the police, the other instruments at his disposal to influence this race. So now Kasami is in a strong position in the second round. And Vimero, like in Kumanovo, like in Karpos, Vimero and uh, the Alliance of Albanians and Alternative, uh, I'm not sure if we can put them all together in the same box here, but they, are, they have a, a, the third largest contingent of votes and they can decide who gets to be the mayor. So they can go to Kasami and tell him, listen, Zaev lost the elections completely, he's completely delegitimized, discredited, he lost the EU accession talks, crime everywhere, he killed your compatriots in Titova in the fire, you know, he's not even investigating or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we support you, you become mayor of Titova. In exchange, kindly bring down his government, join us. And this we started uh, with the Star Wars references, and together we can rule the galaxy as, uh, as a new interethnic coalition. Oh, nicely done! And it's a great <laughs> offer for Bilal. That's a per that's a beautiful offer. He gets to control the second largest city in the country, or the largest Albanian city, the Albanian capital in Macedonia, for four years, and uh, you know uh, he still has a favorite favorite position in the future coalition led by Vimero. Even Dewey could approach uh, Vimero asking for help in this race. Uh, so there are two Albanian parties who are allied with Vimero. They're allied between each other, the Alliance of Albanians and Alternative. The Alliance of Albanians already said we're supporting Bilal Kasami, the BESA candidate. Alternative said no. So there, mm. this race even has the potential to split the Albanian opposition parties. But it has a far greater potential to damage uh, uh, Zaev because he's now losing... Uh, he has to decide between two important coalition partners, both of which can 
bring down the government. I, even the smaller one can can bring down his government if if the if uh, they decide so. So it's a complete mess there. It's a <laughs> it's, Mexican it's a, standoff. <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to say that. Um, it's, this is almost like Mitch McConnell going to Joe Manchin and saying, join us and together we can rule the Senate. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. All eyes will be on that race uh, yeah, that's the for sure. Race. Uh, because that, that's, that's got a lot of implications beyond simply the, the mayorship of, of uh, Tetovo. Um, yeah. All right, good. Let's, um, let's pivot to that word everybody likes to use nowadays to... Um, Zoran Zayev's uh, mm. evil comment and kind mm. of break that down. So I included in the monologue his first quote, which I think he posted on Facebook uh, yesterday, Monday, the day after the elections. I think so. He finally came out on, um, I mean, not in that matter. He finally mm. uh, spoke to the people on technically Monday morning, Sunday night at 1 a.m., and then on Monday put out a Facebook post where he says that evil threatens threatens us from the opposition is what he is saying basically so he's mm. calling the opposition those who voted for the opposition evil um so one first first point on that number one you're and and politicians do this all the time on the on the right and on the left um but they, they have to be careful because your own side might like to see you calling the opposite side evil mm. but it it certainly makes the opposition angry, and it motivates them to come out and vote. And I think that's what we're going to see in the second round. Also, there's a crucial block of the don't knows and won't votes that often decide an election in any country, uh, in any democracy, mm -hmm. that is. And they don't like that either. And that will motivate them and encourage them to come out and vote against you if you're basically running around calling people evil, especially when... Zayev knows he lost. He got spanked. And yet he comes out ranting and raving and full of, of, of bile and, and says, you know, the opposition is, is evil. This is, you know, this is like, you know, looking at our own country, this is uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, talking about the deplorables or Barack Obama talking about the bitter clingers, which all, I think, contributed eventually uh, to the rise of the election of Donald Trump in 2016, people did not like being called bitter clingers and mm. deplorables. And so they came out and they voted for the opposition. Now, today, just before we got on, uh, I saw the news that Zayev um, kind of tripled down on his evil quote. And, and this is hilarious. And again, you know, the Macedonian content farmers are a conservative podcast in English, uh, talking about all things Macedonia. And we have mentioned Edmund Burke, I don't know how many times in our 124 mm. episodes. And we're going to mention him again today. We, we should probably have a bingo card anytime we mention yeah. Edmund Burke. You know? Drink. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so Zayev comes out and he says, and, and here's the quote in English, it's time to unite because against us are the same thugs and criminals who are destroying our country for years. Quote, they say that for the, for the evil to triumph, it's enough for good people to say nothing, unquote. Mm. Um, well, no, they say that. So Edmund Burke was a he. He wasn't a she, he wasn't a she, he wasn't a they, he was a he. But Zoran Zayev doesn't know that Edmund Burke made that quote. Edmund Burke, of course, the Anglo-Irish uh, member of parliament who is considered to be the father of conservatism, classical liberalism, as we call it as well. He did say, for the triumph of evil, it is necessary that good people do nothing hmm. or say nothing. But in this case, Zayev gets it completely wrong. Not only does he quote Edmund Burke and not know who he's quoting, but he doesn't realize that, well, actually it was the good people that said something <laughs> that came out and voted against him and against his party and against his coalition partners because they are corrupt, because they are dishonest, because they lie, because they change the name and change the identity without, uh, against the will of the people, against the consent of the governed to use a Lockean proposal. Drink. Uh, and, and that, that is the fact that the good people did come out and they said something and they're going to say something again on October 31, I believe. Mm. Uh, so I find it just fascinating that, that he is so out of touch that yep. he is 
quoting Burke and not understanding what he is saying. Um, tell, tell, uh, give, give our listeners a kind of a, a, a read or a flavor of, of just how people reacted to that. I don't know what to say, honestly. I mean, he's losing the plot. He, he, <laughs> he, he kept. Uh, he was kept in the basement until uh, one like, thirty in the like morning. Like Uncle Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we we are actually planning to pack up, go home. Mitskovsky made his comments. People singing, dancing in front of the Vimera headquarters. He was reading all the places they won. It took it took a while. And then, uh, you know, we're planning to pack up and go home, and then suddenly we get a ping, oh, Zaf is going to address the public. Oh, interesting. And uh, he comes out in his um, headquarters, you know, in this ghostly in the atmosphere. Star? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so he was, uh, uh, Mitskovsky spoke with all the mayors who won. Uh, Zaev comes out with all the government ministers not a single mayoral candidate. And then he starts lying to the people that uh, we're still turning this around, and he started telling them that it was still, you know, uh, touch and go in many races. So he said, we're going to have a runoff in Aerodrome, in uh, Kisalavoda even, where Vemera destroyed this DSM. So, okay, we say, okay, we know he's lying. We see the numbers. It's still not official, but the projections are that Vemera wins in the first round and Zaev can't ask for a do-over. But when Zaev started complicating all these races, we started thinking, okay, maybe he will try to, I don't know, uh, uh, come up like in 2016, come up with uh, objections before the Electoral Commission, try to throw out some polling stations, organize a do-over in the entire municipality, and then maybe somehow, I don't know, um, overturn the election in some way. Then he says, we're leading in Skopje, which is absolutely bonkers, you know, they lost by 8,000 votes. Mm -hmm. And then he, you know, these are scripted uh, comments. In, uh, you could tell that he was being prepared. And he says this evil comment. Mm -hmm. And we're all like looking at each other. Okay, I mean, he's, he, he said he would say horrible things. Uh, and we would respond oftentimes. Uh, but, you know, he would say things like, I would be eating people alive, <laughs> uh, which is too much, mm -hmm. you know, even for a country which, where the people are prone to cursing and uh, right. wishing you on each other, at least verbally in social media, etc. And then, hours later that morning, he has a statement on Facebook. Again, you know, now this is completely scripted, written, approved, you know, with the Burke comment, etc. So he uh, turned to somebody from his staffers who is better read to include this in the statement. Uh, and again, the evil comment. And then today, another statement, and now he's using comrades in his statement. Uh, we are mobilizing uh, in this communist style vernacular where all our municipal uh, authorities, units are coming together. We're going to defeat the evil. So mm. this is a tremendous, uh, you know, um, toughening of the rhetoric. Mm -hmm. Even though all the big races are finished, there is only Skopje, Bitol, Ohrid, and Kumanova where, you know, in Kumanova he's running against his former fellow party member, mm -hmm. who I personally dislike, who, who, who was protecting Zaev during the uh, incident in the parliament because he's a big burly guy and who later voted for the name change. So, okay, no, no he was mayor actually, he didn't vote for the name change, but he was involved in all this, who then broke ranks with Zaev because, you know, this city, as I said, is pro-Serbian, does not like Zaev's Bulgarian overtures mostly. So this is why he mainly broke with Zaev. Today they send the police on him. So today the most prominent, uh, you know, former SDSM person who defied Zaev, who is running an independent campaign and, and will certainly win the second round, they send the police to, uh, to harass him. And he turned the tables on them because he turned on his phone and started live streaming everything for a minor traffic infraction. So they're now hounding him in his own city. So... Um, we have uh, practically a declaration of war from Zaev, sending the police against the opposition from his own party. So yeah, thing, and, and there, is, there was even another uh, thing that uh, really concerned people on the day of the election. The, the interior ministry, which is doing all this intimidation, etc., 
which was involved for days before this the, the election in uh, uh, bribing people. Uh, so, you know, we had reports all the time about you know, Roma neighborhoods, poor Macedonian neighborhoods, poor Albanian neighborhoods, people going there giving money and uh, food, potatoes, uh, cooking oil. This this is what Zaf always does before the election in exchange for votes. We had a TV crew attacked in Prilep by Zaf supporters as they were filming this. The Infomax guys who are being charged, prosecuted wherever they go, they were heroes of the election going from city to city and recording what Zaf's people are doing. So it was a very ugly campaign uh, to begin with. So now we have the, the police active against the opposition. And on the morning of the election, the police is, issues a statement. It's, it, it, they put a piece of information in their daily brief, which was, you know, out of this world. They said the American embassy informed us that uh, a political party informs them that there is over 80 armed men in Macedonia, loyal to another political party, who are preparing to make incidents, to cause incidents on the day of the election. Hmm. So practically we were voting under the pale of practically being told that Al Albanian gang is planning another Kumanov attack or something similar on the day of the election. We didn't, hmm. They didn't say where, they didn't say which party, but you, we assume it's Albanians. Uh, and, you know, that practically we, are, we were voting under the threat of a terror attack. So they, they may try something until the uh, runoff, mm -hmm. but so many of the votes are already locked in. And uh, this is comforting maybe that, uh, you know, maybe he sobers up after a while, after a few <laughs> days, realizes that it's lost, starts looking into his alternatives. Uh, you know, a lot of people were asking him, you know, going to Budapest soon. <laughs> well, as uh, but as you like to say, there are no alternatives, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, people are, people are, you know, openly uh, betting where he will flee to. I mean, which country would take him as a, as a refugee. Uh, so maybe he sobers up because this is a very big margin of defeat. Yeah. And... Uh, he lost the EU stuff, you know, that we're stuck there, it's hopeless. So the one thing he could possibly have going for him. He tried running on the economy, it was laughable. He promised us a major 500 million euros investment in wind farms. Where, While we are like the rest of Europe, but we are especially in a difficult energy situation. So we can't, if the winter is bad, we are really, really mm. in trouble. Uh, well, yes, but so is all of Europe. <laughs> yeah, but 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 here there is talk that they they practically uh, he 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 admitted that we have very little coal. This is our main energy source. Yeah. He said he's going to pay fifty million euros to Kosovo to provide us with coal. This is not something we do normally. We invest in new uh, veins of coal. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. We strip mining the the hills around Bitola, and you know every ten years you have to start a new hill to strip and. Uh, you know, we have coal. Uh, apparently, he has neglected investment in this while investing in solar and wind farms. Uh, he tried to run on the Corona success, using Philip to the healthcare minister as the star of the Corona fight, even though the statistics mm. were horrible in the whole of Europe. Uh, we are the worst in the whole of Europe. And then Titova happened. So he really has nothing to nothing going for him. But it sounds like he's been listening to Greta too much as well. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that is for the future. Let's talk uh, now briefly in the few minutes we have left about um, round two. And any any specifics that you, you might have? We've, we've got a lot of third parties. Uh, well, the, all the other parties that didn't that don't come in in the, uh, the, the, the in the uh, second round that got below. Uh, or that, that didn't meet the threshold for competing in the second round, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. are going to be deciding. You've got the unknowns, the don't votes, the don't want to tell yous for the polls and things like that. Yeah. Will there be any polls done in the next uh, 10 days? Do you know? Uh, I mean, the polls were so unreliable, if you remember, uh, even the good polls before mm -hmm. the elections, they, nobody predicted this collapse for Zaf. No, nobody right. dared say anything like this. So, I mean, we have well, that, that, another that development, continues. another... 
No, go ahead. Uh, we have an, another cavity in Zev's uh, uh, coalition is the smaller uh, LDP and Dom parties. We mm. forgot mm -hmm. about them, yeah. that they exist, yeah. really. <laughs> but they have a tradition of switching sides. Remember, they were involved, Dom was involved in bringing down Gruevsky from within with uh, mm -hmm. one member of parliament and the another from the DS Liliana, party. Right. So, yeah. So now she's out of parliament, they have another person to replace her, and LDP has two seats. So again, like BESA, together they can bring down the government. And they've been seeing that they're unhappy with their lot in the coalition. They kept asking that, uh, so the, the leader of LDP, Goran Milevsky, he kept saying, listen, I want to be the head of the uh, list in uh, Bitola, where I'm from, at the next general election. And Zayev kept denying him this place. Um, he would kept insisting that he's like the second uh, party in the coalition and you know, he should have one winning, uh, he would get a seat in parliament, but, you know, give me a winning, a leading position of the 20 member list in the whole region at the elections. Right. I deserve this. So now they, they ran separately from Zaev. They didn't win much across the country, uh, but in Bitola they cost Zaev like 3,000 votes. And Zaev's press conference after he was done calling us evil and uh, lying to his supporters that he's going to turn this around in the second round, he kept railing about LDP and Dom, how they betrayed him. He kept overhyping the loss they inflicted on the coalition while undercutting, you know, Levitsa did far better, you know, this leftist, populist, nationalist. National Socialist Party, <laughs> which <laughs> they did really well. I mean, they did, you know, they won, uh, they didn't win any mayoral seat, but they won like uh, dozens of uh, council member seats. In Aerodrome, they were exceptionally bad, uh, exceptionally good, so uh, they're like a solid third place, uh, even challenging Zaev in some places, even, even the second party in some polling stations. Uh, they were a choice for disgruntled Vemera people, so they cost Vemera some votes, but apparently they cost ASDSM a lot more, or uh, even maybe found some uh, non-voters, uh, some angry boycotters uh, to join them. So they're going to be a serious factor in the councils, and they're already saying, okay, we were poking Vemera from the right, we were attacking Vemera that they're not doing enough, to fight Zaev on the name change, even though Levitsa helped Zaev grab power by being part of the colored revolution and faces zero, uh, you know, prosecutorial police activity against them, while Vemero is practically a blackmailed, uh, you know, a dissident party. Vemero is effectively mm -hmm. a dissident party with so many people arrested, prosecuted, hounded from the country, and is, act is campaigning with a blocked bank account. So uh, Levitsa now says, okay, the elections are over. They practically feel that they've done uh, all, they, all they wanted to do by attacking Vemera from the right. Now they say, let's talk bringing down Zaf. So uh, they're an interesting uh, development in the elections. LDP did much less damage to SDSM than Levitsa did to Vemera or Levitsa did to SDSM, but in Bitola they cost him a lot. So Zaf dedicated the press conference to them telling them get back in the fold at the central level, at the local level. You know, these are the stalwart liberal voters who will have to vote for SDSM in the second round. They will have to come back to us, even though these people are notorious turncoats. Mm -hmm. So I've declared them like the, the diehard uh, liberal European democratic voters. Mm -hmm. So um, with their votes, he probably would lead in Bitola, maybe even win in Bitola. So now Vemera has a chance to, you know, not th there's nothing Vemera can offer them. They, they're not competing uh, like Besa is in Tetova for an important mayoral position, but they have made their presence known that they are disgruntled with Zaev. So they're another potential way for uh, Vemero and Levitsa and the Albanian opposition parties to, um, you know, Nipadzav. My thinking is that uh, third round, if Zav does not do anything stupid, mm -hmm. the second round continues in this direction and 
uh, Vilmero and uh, Albanian opposition in Tetovo and the ASDSM renegade persons in Karpos and Kumanovo win big. Uh, Zayev is destroyed, is left uh, to go back to Strumica with nothing else, <laughs> no local <laughs> power across the country. And uh, then, uh, you know, steps to form a new government, maybe a technical government, maybe an opposition, a vmro led opposition government that will organize early elections in, in the spring. Hmm. That is an awful lot of elections and an awful lot of campaigning mm. between now and the spring. And don't forget, I guess we shouldn't forget, is that, uh, I believe this still holds true, is that the last 90 days, the last 100 days before the expiration of any government, well, this this current government, I should say, mm. um, there would be an ethnic Albanian as prime minister under the... No, no, no. If, no. If we form a new government in the parliament with okay. Alivica, with either Besa joining Vemura okay. or the LDP and Dom, then, uh, I mean, that's that the promise Zaf made. Null and void, yeah. I just don't, I don't... Obviously, Albanians will have important yeah. positions in this. Yeah, I, although I just I just don't see Zayev agreeing to the technical government. So, so. No, I mean, the parliament can vote him out. That's I mean, he has only 62 seats in parliament. Of oh, that's true. Yeah, oh, sorry, if, you're, yeah, yeah, if, it brings, yeah, if the can. government comes down falls down so he, he he may not be asked whether he, what he agrees to <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry mr zayev you don't have a choice yeah no. <laughs> we make well, a reversal maybe jafiri tries to defend him by delaying the vote of no confidence in parliament <laughs> there we, go. we may have the 2017 incident uh, but in reverse <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, I think that's a good wrap on this first round. Again, that was held on Sunday the 17th. Next round is on Sunday the 31st, a little less than two weeks from now. Uh, we'll kind of follow this monitor, and then, and then in, the, in the meantime, we, we might even start a pool to see how many times uh, Zoran Zayev calls the opposition evil uh, between mm. now and then, yep. uh, since it seems to be his new thing. Uh, yeah. you know, go ahead, keep doing it. It just makes people mad and motivated. So yeah, it's making it worse for him, yeah. really. Yeah. So uh, he's he's not listening to his handlers at, uh, in Calais. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Uh, there was this intervention with the announcement about the inc- coming incident. Other than that, uh, I mean, they yeah. I suppose they would like to keep Zaf until he signs something with Bulgaria, to the extent they care if Macedonia joins the EU. I'm not sure yeah, if they do. I don't think they do. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you're giving up on the EU, then there is really no reason to keep him, keep this person uh, uh, muddling things here. And uh, I don't know. I yeah. honestly don't know what. The, oh, I, I guess all they care about is that somebody signs uh, a deal with Bechtel and that's it. <laughs> a multi- Filthy lucre. So, yeah. exactly. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. All right, that's a good wrap. Um, great to catch up with you. I know we're doing these podcasts um, about every two weeks now, which is fine. We've got we've all got a lot going on in uh, in our lives, mm. and this gig doesn't pay enough. Doesn't pay anything actually. Yeah. <laughs> we do it for the love of it. We do it because yeah. we love Macedonia. So, oh, we we can we can uh, increase uh, the frequency if things continue to go badly for Zaf. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yes, we will. Yeah. We will. We will. We will take joy in that. I was listening to the. Um, Final thought is listening to the Ricochet podcast, the flagship podcast yesterday with uh, Peter Robinson and Rob Long and James Lilix. And, and Peter mm-hmm. Robinson, who's a good Catholic, said that he is mm-hmm. taking absolute delight in, uh, in in watching what's happening to the Biden-Harris administration <laughs> and yeah. how it's going down. And he says, should I feel yeah, yeah. guilty about that? Should I confess? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Great catching up with you. You too, buddy. Take care. All right, take care.